Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today we're going to do an unboxing from Tarantula Cribs, but maybe not for the reason that you think. This is an unboxing courtesy of Tarantula Cribs. I'll put a link in the description, or several links in the description. They've got a website, they've got Instagram, and so on, and they make some really cool enclosures. Now, those of you who have seen a lot of my videos will know that I can't keep tarantulas. It's not that they're illegal or anything in my area, it's just that my, my wife has specifically requested that I not keep tarantulas, and I'd rather her keep her happy than uh, try to keep tarantulas. So these enclosures, even though they are originally intended for tarantulas, when, it, when I saw them, uh, I saw them on the Tarantula Collective's one of his unboxings, and I thought, these look absolutely fantastic for a variety of invertebrates that I keep. And so I'm really excited to check these out and try them out with some of the species that I keep that are not tarantulas, but that would do very, very well. As you can see, they've packed these separately in this box. Safest way to do it, of course. And I'm really, really excited about these. I'm not even sure which one to open first. This is so cool. So here is what appears to be the smallest one that's coming. So I'm sure for tarantulas this would be used for small slings, but I could use it for jumping spider slings, for example, I'm sure, something like that. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. See I love that the, the holes in here that are drilled, precision drilled, they look really nice, providing a lot of good cross ventilation. And one of my favorite things about these, look at this, it's got a magnetic closure on there magnets on both sides and it just snaps right into place. Very cool. So you don't have to worry about you know jarring it loose or anything like that under any normal circumstances. This lid is going to stay there and uh, keep your invertebrates where you want them. I could also see using this for a very young mantis or you know a lot of different possibilities. Really good clarity on this and there's top ventilation as you can see as well as side ventilation. Very, very cool. And here's another container that's quite a bit larger than the one I just opened. So let's, let's check this one out. Get that tape loose here. Let's see this one. You can see the Tarantula Cribs logo right there. Very cool. Again, lots of really nice ventilation along two sides as well as the top. And this is a sliding enclosure or sliding lid, but it still has magnets to make sure it's secure. They just kind of click into place right there with the magnets. And you can see there's really no gap there. So as long as it's something that can't get through these holes, it's really not got a, not got a chance of getting out. Really sleek styling on that. Um, I like the opaque bottom, but it's raised so you could stack these and still get ventilation. It's really nice. Got these corners rendering it stackable. Very cool. So again, a lot of possibilities for an enclosure this size. You could do small desert darkling beetles in here. You could do a slightly larger mantis. You could do isopods. This would be great for a small starter culture of isopods if you wanted it to uh, you know, be a display enclosure. You could do something like that. 
for a while until the culture got too big. So very, very cool. Beautiful enclosure. It's just fantastic that Tarantula Cribs was willing to send me these enclosures to try them out and to let you see how these might apply to things beyond tarantulas. So those of you who keep invertebrates like I do but can't keep tarantulas, a lot of these might work out for you. I also want to give a shout out to our supporters at Patreon. You rock, what can I say? You're amazing and I couldn't do it without you. So thanks a lot. So this one, let's see. It's kind of fun, the gradual uh, increase in size with each one. Sorry everyone. I unexpectedly ran out of space on my iPad and so I had to delete a few things before we continued. Here we go. Let's open this one up. Get a good look at it here. See if I can preserve most of the bubble wrap for reuse a little bit here. Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? There we go. Wow. And once again, this has these wonderful magnetic closures here. So you can slide the lid off and then these magnets slip right into place. Nice ventilation on the sides and on the top. Opaque bottom and the tarantula cribs logo here. Once again, this would be fantastic for a smaller culture of isopods. You could really get it going in this container, being able to see it really well with some of the more day active uh, species like uh, Porcelionides prunosus, for example, something like that. Get them really going in this smaller container and you'd eventually want to move them out, but this would be fabulous for something like that, as well as many other isopod species, of course, and lots of other invertebrates. All right, time to open the largest and the last enclosure. Okay, here we go. Look at that. That is a really nice size enclosure. There's a lot you could do with that. You could do quite an excellent desert community vivarium in here. You could do some interesting things with a mantis. This would be great for a lot of adult mantids since they wouldn't need a molting platform. This, this lid would be fine unmodified for most of them. Um, as well as, of course, many different isopods and the footprint is pretty comparable to the six quart um, tub I'm, I'm imagining, just eyeballing it. And so you could keep a pretty good thriving colony of quite a few different types of isopods in here. The ventilation's great. A lot of people are gonna wonder, well, what about these holes? Fungus gnats can clearly get into these holes. Well, that may be true, but what I have been noticing uh, in my experience with uh, the fungus gnats and well-ventilated enclosures is the better ventilated they are, the fewer issues there are with fungus gnats. So I'm definitely gonna try this out with some isopods and let you know how it goes. It didn't take me long to decide which isopods I was going to try out in these enclosures. So let me show you. The smallest enclosure is really not uh, a good fit for isopods. I think it'll be absolutely excellent for a uh, very young mantis. I just need to make sure I have a proper molting platform in there, put in some substrate, and it'll be good to go. The second size up, this one here, is perfect for my small rubber ducky colony. I had it in a container that was probably about half this size in terms of effective space that the isopods could use, and 
decided that now that the colony is growing, it's time to move up a little bit. But because this uh, enclosure is so easy to see into, I'll be able to keep tabs on them. And I think this will be fantastic. It provides enough ventilation without providing too much so that the rubber duckies can have it how they like it, nice and moist. I decided to put some Porcellione de Sprinosis Oreo crumbles in this enclosure here because I think it will display them very nicely. They are a pretty active species. They're out and about during the day. Light doesn't seem to bother them a whole lot. And so why not take advantage of the excellent display qualities of this enclosure with something that will be active and running around, just like you can see one or two of them doing now. So uh, because this species is very prolific, I will have to move them out to a larger container as they reproduce, but that's just fine. In the meantime, I think this will be a great way for me to monitor their population and enjoy this active species. For the largest of the tarantula cribs enclosures, I decided to go with milk backs. Milk backs are a lot like dairy cows in that they tend to be pretty day active and less perturbed by light than a lot of other isopods. And so I think this will be a, a great fit and really take advantage of the uh, excellent display qualities that this enclosure offers. As you can see, there are a lot of them wandering around right now. And uh, so I think it's going to be great. I will have to move them out periodically because they breed quickly. So I'll, I'll thin the herd once in a while. But this is really, really going to turn out nicely, I think. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday now and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.